Hi everybody, thanks for joining this TechSoup hosted online discussion for fiscal year in Reminder. And it's all about planning. I'm Aretha Simons, I'm the webinar producer here. And today I wanted to introduce our webinar intern, Kevin Wong. Kevin, would you wave? All right, I got Alan in my screen, so I'm gonna change my settings. Uh, Kevin, yeah, that's Kevin Wong. He's doing a great job. He's going to be with us for the summer. I'm so excited. And thank you all for joining us again. I'm going to introduce our speaker for today in just a moment. But before I do, let me show you how you can engage. If this is your first time here on our TechSoup webinars, um, please keep your microphones on mute. Um, that will help keep the quality of the recording. Everybody can hear. Um, if you have a question, use the raise your hand option. Um, at the end of the session, but sometimes people say I can't find it So just you know do the raise your hand like that and we'll catch you and um, ask you to unmute yourself the closed caption I'm gonna turn this on right now. So if you need the closed caption it has been enabled So you'll be able to read the transcript check your email in about two days We'll email you the replay of the webinar and I'm gonna go ahead and move it all the way and turn it over to Nick Ben he's Nick has so many titles I'm gonna get it wrong Nick's gonna give you his title right now because he wears so many hats so Nick Ben always a pleasure and I'm looking forward to learning from you today thank you thanks Aretha and um, hi everybody I want to even say good morning because I know we've got folks from a lot of different places on this zoom uh, session today um, but I'm coming to you live from Oakland, California, here on the West Coast, and um, it's just 10 o'clock here. Uh, it's a beautiful sunny day in Oakland, um, but I hope that uh, everybody's got good weather and, and a good day ahead of you, wherever you are. Um, my name is Nick Finn. Uh, I've been with TechSoup for almost eight years now, um, and I've held a variety of roles there. These days, I'm a senior director um, on, on growth and marketing. And, and in the day-to-day -day of what that really means is I drink a lot of coffee um, and I do a lot working with the various technology partners that TechSoup works with. So big corporations from Microsoft, Adobe, Intuit, um, all the way down to our very smallest partners, all who have offers in the TechSoup catalog to help nonprofits do what they do best which is the good work in our communities, working with all sorts of different populations, um, doing public education, public services. Um, and I wanna start by just simply saying to all of you who are on this call today, thank you. Thanks for being willing to put your career into nonprofits and to make the effort to make the world a better place. Um, it seems like every day right now we find a new challenge that needs to be addressed in one way or another. Um, but I've worked in nonprofits and advocacy for a long time and have always really enjoyed the people that I've met during that experience and really felt like, you know, these are the special folks who really are working hard to make the world a better place. So I just want to thank you from the start for being part of that. Um, for some of you, TechSoup may be a new organization to work with. For others, you've been with us for a long time and have hopefully we, we've been helpful to you in one way or another, hopefully multiple ways. Um, but if you're new to TechSoup, I wanna just quickly explain kind of who we are and what we do. Um, TechSoup sits at the intersection between technology and nonprofits. We believe that technology can be an extremely powerful and effective tool. Um, we also know that it can be an expensive tool and it can be a hard tool to fully understand all the time. Um, and so we believe that nonprofits can benefit greatly from using technology to help manage staff, to help execute their mission in the community. But we also know that sometimes you need some help getting the right technology platforms chosen, implementing them correctly, um, asking questions when you need answers. Um, and, and let's be honest, that's not always easy to get. Um, if you work with a giant technology company and you've tried to sit on chat before or, or call in with a question about something, let's be real, you could spend an awful long time waiting to get an answer. Um, and also sometimes those answers are designed for businesses and other big corporations and don't take into account 
the the differences and uniqueness of how nonprofits operate. Um, today's session is about fiscal year end planning. And um, let me preface it by saying that over time, we've really learned that nonprofits have quite a diverse set of fiscal year ends. For a long time, it's been understood generally that for most nonprofits, the end of June is the fiscal year end calendar where they, where they reset the books, they start looking forward to what the next year is. Um, but more and more, we're also seeing a whole lot of folks who are using December as the end of their fiscal year as well. Um, and so before I get fully going here, I, I do want to ask if folks could just drop into chat really quickly, what month is your fiscal year in? What is the last month of your budgeting process? Because um, that's what we're going to talk about today. And it'd be really great to, well, already I can see in chat, we've got a whole lot of different a whole lot of different answers here, but most of them are June and, and December, which is great. Um, well, why does fiscal year end matter for technology budgeting? Let me advance my slides here and, and, and talk about this. Um, there have been a lot of different reasons why that fiscal year end deadline matters for tech planning, and it's changed over time. Um, it used to be in the early days of TechSoup, um, when our Microsoft program was very different, uh, that, that the fiscal year end was sort of when we reset what was called allotments for Microsoft. Allotments meaning that there was a certain number of licenses that nonprofits could get through Microsoft at you know, the really affordable rate that TechSoup is able to provide nonprofits. Over time, as more and more software has really just migrated to the cloud and become software as a service, the licensing requirements around that are completely different. Um, and so those allotments really don't hold true for that Microsoft catalog anymore. However, there are still other reasons why the fiscal year end matters in technology budgeting and planning. The first one really is because we're all overloaded in our jobs. And sometimes a deadline forces us to remember that we have to think about what's coming down the pike six years or six months, 12 months down the road. So planning for 2023 um, is pretty important to at least be top of mind right now. Um, and everybody on this call probably has a unique and different set of circumstances dictating what 2023 is gonna look like for them. But for lots of folks, common threads are looking ahead about how staffing changes are going to impact which licenses you need, how many licenses you need, what products you may need to be using differently next year as staffing or volunteer um, volunteers come in to help with different tech platforms you may be using. Um, a second reason is we often find um, toward the end of the fiscal year, you know, there's two or three projects that you planned on completing at the start of the year and set budget aside for that didn't happen. They didn't come to fruition for one reason or another. And we know that when we tell our boards, and TechSoup is the same, by the way, we're a 501c32, right? So we have to propose our budget just like you do, and we have to make sure that we hit our targets. Um, when you get toward the end of the year, though, you're looking at what budget remains, what may have not been completely used up, and smart spending pattern means use what you've got in the budget right now to make sure you're planning ahead for next year rather than just um, you know skipping through into the next year and then realizing you may be tighter on something than you need. Um, and then the third thing is those allotment resets, like I mentioned. Now, although they don't apply for the Microsoft program the way they used to in the past, there are still um, several products in the TechSoup catalog that do have allotment restrictions, meaning there's a set number of licenses that you can get. And so um, if, if one of those products, one of those specialized things is something that your nonprofit is using or interested in, you should just know about those allotment resets. Um, so as I already mentioned, on the planning for 2023 piece, it, it's really thinking about the licenses that you're going to need in the coming year. Um, and how those licenses might be different. Um, I don't think any of us are in the position to be expanding wildly with staff count these days. 
Um, but if you do have new staff coming in, uh, you've got to keep an eye on how many of those licenses you need, whether it's for, you know, Intuit QuickBooks Online or Microsoft 365, if those are the platforms you're using. Maybe you're using older um, Microsoft Office standards still, um, which is available as a discount through TechSoup. It's not a cloud product, really. Um, but you got to keep those license counts in mind. Um, and along with those license counts, honestly, is one of the bigger budget items for most nonprofits, which is hardware. Um, and if you've been needing to procure hardware in the past two years, you know that the supply chain impact of COVID has been significant. It's made getting things harder. It's made some things more expensive. We've tried really, really hard to keep a line of hardware available to nonprofits. Um, our refurbished hardware program is still going well. Um, and we also have these relationships with Dell, with Lenovo, with HP. Um, but hardware is obviously more expensive than a single license of most software packages. So if you're planning ahead for next year, make sure you have a hardware line item put in there. Um, platforms themselves matter. Are you switching to different platforms for next year? Maybe you've chosen a new email marketing system. Maybe you've got a new project management system like Asana or as a lot of folks did in the last two years, switched off paper and pencil accounting uh, onto Intuit QuickBooks Online or something similar. Um, those new platforms and training around them are important to keep in mind as budget items. Um, and then maybe you've got changes to internal systems that you're trying to make. Um, again, that might, in, that might produce consultant costs. You may be engaged with the TechSoup Services Group as well. Um, but these are line items to really think about as you head into 2023. Um, even if you conclude that you don't have a dollar amount that you need to put in there, think about having those line items in there as well. Um, the incomplete work plans that I mentioned already are a good source to just, you know, consider like, did you not get as many licenses of something as you wanted? Um, another thing a lot of nonprofits will find is that they've dropped platforms during the year and aren't using them anymore or have canceled their subscription. And so there might be monthly fees associated with that, that you're no longer paying, that are in fact still in your budget. Um, if you have had a hard time getting hardware, um, you know, again, planning for 2023, you got to look at that and whether or not there's laptops or desktops in particular. Um, and I've already mentioned these license counts a few times. So now I want to talk about the allotment resets at TechSoup. And one thing I want to call out about these slides, first of all, you will get a copy of the deck afterwards. So if this is a helpful webinar for you, you'll get these materials and they have live links on it. Each of the slides I'm going to share with you right now does have a URL at the bottom of it. Um, and uh, if you click on that URL, it's going to take you co to content pieces we've developed this year, which sort of have more of the backup information around these allotment resets. Um, but there's a there's kind of four buckets to think about on the allotment resets. There are some uh, products where we we're talking about a limit of one license per nonprofit um, for the lifetime of the nonprofit. There are others where there's a limit of one license per year. Um, and then plenty of them are multiple licenses per year or unlimited. Um, for some on that second bullet, the limit of one license per year, there's a, I don't wanna call it sneaky, but I haven't found a better word yet. There's a sneaky way you can sort of get around that, which is if you order a license in June, you could order a second license in July after that fiscal year and reset, you would be able to work with both licenses. Um, it's probably not the case that most folks on this call need to worry about that. But if you're one of the edge use cases where in fact you do need two licenses of something where there's a limit in place, you know, take a look at that as a way to get around it. Um, but most of all, uh, I recommend just taking a look at that blog post itself, um, running through some of the license and products in there um, and seeing if there's anything specific um, that you think is important. Some of the products that, you know, come right out of there, which, which have that limit of one allotment per fiscal year. Um, it'd be Amazon Web Services, Zoom, which we're using right now. 
um, Dashlane and Areva and Air Slate, um, IFAX, Azavea, Dharma Merchant Services, FileMaker, which has a devoted following, um, Donor Perfect, and then QuickBooks Made Easy, which is video training for folks who are using QuickBooks. And I'm not going to scroll through the whole um, through the whole blog post, but it, it has all the details you might need around those single allotment uh, resets. So another major item I've mentioned a couple of times already is hardware. Um, and while I'm not going deep into pricing on that, that blog post at the bottom does have the links to the places in the TechSoup catalog where those hardware offers are, uh, are provided and shared, and you can click into those as best you want. But, um, you know, as a reminder, TechSoup does a healthy line of business with several different refurbishers who take, you know, what we might call gently used hardware. Um, and it goes through a certified refurbishment process to make sure, you know, it works, um, that it's good hardware, that there's no issues with it. Um, and then those are, you know, available through TechSoup. Um, and it's been a great way to bypass some of the supply chain issues for both laptops and desktops over the last two years. Um, they still have their own supply chain issues. I'll be perfectly frank with you. So, you know, it, it's not as if it's a done deal and perfect each time you make, make that request, but those refurbished items have been an extremely popular uh, part of the TechSoup catalog ever since COVID fit, hit. Um, networking has been resurgent in the last year after that first year of COVID when everybody went home to work. Many of us still are doing that. Um, and so the, the need for networking on site was not as strong, but that's kind of bouncing back. And these days, TechSoup maintains two great partnerships with Cisco and then Cisco Meraki lines of products. Um, and so if networking is something in particular that your nonprofit is having to grapple with again, I'd recommend looking at those. Um, a perennial favorite amongst nonprofits are Mobile Beacon because they provide internet hotspots Libraries across the US in particular are great fans of Mobile Beacon. In many libraries, you can check out a Mobile Beacon um, hotspot and use it for a few days and bring it back to the library. Um, but for anybody who does field work or, or has connectivity issues at their nonprofit, um, Mobile Beacon's been a pretty good stopgap for folks on that. And then, like I mentioned, uh, Dell, Lenovo, and HP all provide. Um, set product pricing through TechSoup for nonprofits. Um, and, uh, you know, if there's, if there's a powerful computer in their arsenal or some piece of hardware that you need access to, um, going through TechSoup um, is a great way to do it. I, I, I'm seeing a question from Larry here. Is it just refurbished? Yeah, no, Larry, it's not. If the refurbished program is one program, but the Dell program itself is is for new hardware. So you can get new hardware from Dell through TechSoup. Um, although you will also see that in the refurbished hardware category, there are plenty of Dell computers as well. Um, all right, so that's a quick, uh, quick overview on hardware. And please do feel free to drop any hardware related questions you may have in chat. Um, I want to address quickly the needs of small nonprofits in particular, and I mean, I really mean small but mighty nonprofits, but you know, it, they're nonprofits that don't have budgets of tens of millions of dollars. And frankly, we know these days that a large number of nonprofits created in the US every year are small nonprofits. Um, it's folks who are launching a startup effort to make a difference on a particular issue or in their community or provide a service. Um, and there may only be one staff person at that nonprofit uh, or one or two. Um, and for them, uh, you know, the needs are a little bit different. For instance, you're probably not looking at Cisco networking equipment, right? Um, and in fact, my guess is for many, uh, everybody's working in a distributed manner from home or from remote offices where you're not all in the same location together. Um, but one of the things I really want to emphasize is one of, as soon as COVID hit and 
folks were forced into the work from home scenario, there was a storyline that quickly emerged as a narrative that TechSoup heard repeatedly. And that was small nonprofits who had really relied on almost paper and pencil accounting systems or spread across a few different Excel spreadsheets. And suddenly when people weren't together in the same physical location, it was a real struggle to reconcile books, to close books at the end of the fiscal year. Um, and for sure, QuickBooks um, has always been popular at nonprofits, but saw a real surge um, as folks you know, made that move out of paper and pencil accounting into a modern um, online accounting system. Um, small nonprofits uh, benefit most, I think, from the QuickBooks Online Plus platform. That's really the place to, to really be looking at. Again, Mobile Beacon, as I mentioned, because it provides that hotspot ability, if you don't have great connectivity where you are, that helps. Um, Avast Cloud Care Antivirus has been a growing piece of the catalog at TechSoup for a couple of years. But if you're looking at security options, you know, we used to work with Symantec and no longer do. Um, but instead, we work with Avast. And so that, cl that Cloud Care Antivirus is a, is a great piece of the catalog. Um, if you're like me, you're a huge fan of Adobe products in general. I've used them in almost every different place of my career path along the many years. Um, and uh, I would recommend looking at two in particular. Adobe Acrobat Pro is, you know, that, that's the thing you want to manage PDFs, to create PDFs, to edit PDFs. And we all know how essential those are. But somebody sends you something, and you're like, oh, I need to change this and edit it. And nobody can do it because you can't open it. That's why Acrobat Pro is really kind of the platform you want to be using for that. And then Photoshop Elements and Premiere Elements bundles. Think of that as sort of like a, a smaller in scope version of Creative Cloud. It doesn't have all the tools in Adobe Creative Cloud, but it may have enough um, to help you get where you're going. And so I recommend taking a look at that. Norton LifeLock is another security package, which has proven very popular over the past couple of years. Um, and then finally, you know, TechSoup over the last three years has really been working to develop a line of different services for nonprofits that work in conjunction with these tech company products that we help share through the catalog. Because as I was saying at the start, it's not just getting tech, it's managing it, it's implementing it. It's making sure it's optimized and working the way that you want it. There's nothing worse than getting a platform and then realizing you don't have what you need to make it actually do what you think it should be able to do. You need some help. Um, and then troubleshooting in particular is a big need around those platforms. So TechSoup has a bunch of different services around that. I'm just highlighting help desk here. Because again, in those one-off cases where that printer just exploded or you know everybody's got a daily help desk need of some kind, that's been something that's been fairly popular. Again, there's a link at the bottom for folks who are running small nonprofits. If, there are, uh, if you wanna follow that link, that'll give you some extra, extra thoughts around um, stuff that seemed to really work for nonprofits this year. Um, if you get TechSoup's marketing emails, <laughs> which I hope you do, because I help I help run the team that writes a lot of those, um, you know that this year saw some very big transitions in our Microsoft program. You know, and as I mentioned earlier, it used to be back in the old days when you bought a copy of Microsoft Standard on a CD, right? Um, that there would be a limit to how many of those CDs you could actually get. Um, but, but already that is like a completely old school way of doing it. And these days, really people just download these platforms straight through the internet. You get the, um, the benefit of updates and, and edits to the platforms as are necessary. Um, and so now, um, in 2022, when we talk about our Microsoft, um, offers, there's really three that I, that I want to highlight to this group. Um, one is Microsoft 365 Business Premium, which is what we find a lot of nonprofits really gravitate towards as the cloud version of Microsoft Office, right? So it's the, it's the version that lets you do all the things. Um, it keeps, it, it remains updated itself online. You're not loading it via compact disk onto your computer. 
Um, the second one that I would mention is Microsoft Office Standard Discounted. Office Standard is not the cloud version of Office. It's the version that sits on your local computer, right? Um, and so what that means it, is it doesn't get the benefit of lifetime updates. Um, but sitting on your local computer, it can still do the work that you need with Word, Excel, and all those programs that you are probably used to using. Um, this particular product, Microsoft Office Standard, used to be available as a donation through TechSoup. And that changed earlier this year as Microsoft restructured their catalog. It's now available through TechSoup only as a discount, but it is still available. Um, and uh, if you follow that link at the bottom of this slide, you'll be able to see all the Microsoft offers, including the direct uh, point, uh, the direct link to Microsoft Office Standard discounted. Finally, um, of course, we have Windows 11 updates for folks. Um, and uh, probably most of you who have already installed Windows 11 on your systems. Um, but uh, we are a we, we do offer the Windows 11 upgrade. Um, if you haven't done the Windows 11 upgrade, you you may not know, but you should know that you need to run a check with Microsoft ahead of time with a utility to make sure that the computer you're looking to update can actually, it, it actually meets the technical specifications for processor speed and hard drive space, et cetera. Um, that's, this is probably old news for a lot of you though, but we do offer that Windows 11 upgrade. Um, and so those are the three Microsoft elements worth talking about and thinking about for fiscal year and planning. Um, yeah. Um, finally, even though it might seem counterintuitive, one final piece of advice I think really is worth sharing is like avoid overspending. We've got to protect our budgets. They're getting tighter and tighter every week right now. Um, and I, you know, personally, I know that the the danger with technology sometimes can be it's the new shiny thing, and everybody wants that thing, and they want to get a chance to play with it and work with it. Um, but it's really important to think about the practical implications of whether or not you really do need it. And if you do, make sure that you're taking the steps to implement it properly and that it's staffed properly. Um, because the number of times folks implement these new platforms, but then nobody adopts it internally, or there's a piece of it that seems particularly hard to manage, you just have to think all those through things. You have to think those pieces through for sure. And the other thing is, at the same time, don't be afraid to make a mistake, honestly. The advantage to some of these tech platforms is you can try it. Try it for a year. And if it seems like at the end of the year, this was more hassle than it was worth, or it didn't solve the problem you thought it would solve, turn it off at the end of that year. Stop paying for that license. Don't assume that because you've ordered it, you have to have it you know, for the lifetime of the tool. Um, as you're making decisions around these platforms, make sure you know the numbers for your nonprofit. Um, and, and that's a matter of thinking about how many users you have, how many contacts you have, how many donors you have. Um, if you're a medium to large nonprofit, and you're making decisions around platforms to use with thousands and thousands of people, you know, sometimes those platforms do price based on the number of folks in the database. So you just got to think about the size of the audience that you're talking to, in particular for communications digital tools. Um, and then a piece of advice that our folks had also picked up that I really liked is like, um, take a deeper look at fewer products instead of just doing a wide cast across the entire catalog and picking this and picking this and picking this, I would definitely recommend narrowing down, thinking about two or three things that could be helpful to your nonprofit next year. And, um, you know, go deep on those. There, there's no reason to pull in everything um, if there's not capacity to adopt it properly and to use it properly. Um, so, that's the end of what I wanted to share about fiscal year and planning. I really think that this is best thought of as an overview. And what I really recommend is that when you get the email with this uh, presentation in it, 
take a look at the content, the blog posts that are linked at the bottom of each of those slides. Um, and uh, that ought to make it easier to drill into anything that you really need. Um, and I know I can see folks have been dropping in some great questions into chat. So I, I really appreciate that. Um, but overall, you know, I think the message is um, plan ahead. We do have tools that can help you. Um, you don't have to get them all, uh, but technology can be an extremely powerful enabler. Um, and again, going back to that example earlier of just simply moving off paper and pencil accounting into QuickBooks, you know, the amount of time that frees up of staff, the amount of accuracy your nonprofit is able to have, the enhanced, you know, the better relationship with board and donors, because you can quickly share digitally, like, here's where our books are. This is, you know, we know exactly where we are budgetarily right now. Those things are all extremely important. Um, and finally, if you have everything you need at this point, great. I hope the TechSoup has been helpful. I hope that what we've provided, um, you know, really is meaningful and gets you, you um, doing a better job of serving your community and uh, accomplishing the mission in your, you know, in your mission statement. Um, but if you do need help on implementing those platforms, if you need advice and support about how to use them better or something just doesn't seem to be working the way it should, it's the TechSoup Services Division, I think, that can be most helpful to you. And, and I think what you'll really see over the next several years is that between the services we offer and our whole line of courses, education itself around technology, not just the licenses for the platforms, but actual education around it, how to use it, how to implement it, what works, what doesn't work. Those will be the things I think that TechSoup will kind of become even more known for over the next several years. So um, I'll leave it at that. Thank you all again for the work that you're doing. Um, you know, I hope our 32 minutes here has been helpful. Um, and again, if you do have questions, please feel free to stick around, drop them into chat, and, and we'll try to get them all answered. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nate. Would you stop sharing your screen so I could see everyone? If you have a question, please use the raise your hand option. I know Kevin Mohall and um, Kevin Wong and Gail Carpentier was putting a lot of great links in the chat. Any questions? For Nick. Okay, Adrian, you're raising, you're waving your hand. Go ahead and unmute yourself. <laughs> oh, I don't have any questions. I was just waving because I put my camera on. <laughs> uh, okay. Hi, Adrian. I, I will say uh, great tips. I'm a tech person too. So great tips. Everything you say was uh, spot on. I loved it. Thank you. I'm glad. Yeah, awesome. Anyone else have a question for Nick or Gail? I'd just like to know, are there any old videos? Um, my grandson can get on here and just whip through the internet and do stuff, but I'm trying to get up to speed on things so that I can bring my organization up to speed. So we have um, TechSoup's YouTube channel and the videos are like in categories. So you'll see webinars and you'll see different titles and you'll see um, office hours, there's different different categories or playlists if you will so yeah we have hundreds and hundreds of videos there's also a great line of tech soup courses around a lot of stuff um if you're feeling like that's uh you know that's the kind of direction you want to go yeah if you just go to techsoup.org you should be able to get straight to the courses as well yes thank you nick totally forgot about the courses and some are inexpensive as 10 30 dollars so yeah awesome thank you Anyone else have a question? Oh, Christine, go ahead. Um, I wonder, we use Trello here in our nonprofit and I know Asana, I think bought them last year or something. I'm just wondering if there's any discounts available for like the amped up Trello uh, through TechSoup. Gail, would you know about that or? Um, I, I can tell you that we, we do offer Asana itself through the catalog. Um, I don't think Trello as a standalone product is in there. Um, yeah. Nick, no, Trello is not a standalone on our side, at least. Yeah. 
but yeah, I, we, we, we certainly have internal folks who use Trello as well at TechSoup. So I know there's, there's mm-hmm. interest in that, but you may look at that Asana offer. I don't know if it, it maybe would fit your need or yeah, I would recommend that. Thank you. Okay, um, Parker, I see your hand. Nora. Yeah, so first I'm gonna say that uh, Trello was bought by Atlassian, not Asana. So just clarifying there. Um, so my, my background is in technology. I've been programming for 20 years, been working in the technology industry for the, over the last decade. Um, so a lot of these technologies are just my bread and butter. It's very natural for me to use that technology. I'm wondering if there's any tips for onboarding my volunteers who are not working in the technology space, things like Slack communication, asynchronous work, things like Trello dashboards that, you know, just, it, it just has clicked for me because that's what I've done, but it's new to them. Yeah, that, that is a great question. Um, I, and I have the worst answer ever, which is it depends. Uh, but I think that like, uh, mo- most of the time when I struggle with that as somebody who manages people and volunteers and staff, um, first of all, it's a case by case basis because everybody does come with very differing levels of skills. Um, but if somebody's not very comfortable, particularly using these communication channels like Slack, for instance, or even SMSing, I essentially try to just force them to use those channels with me. Like we chat by Slack, like we really do that and just try to get them more and more comfortable with it. Um, I think interpersonally, we have to express a lot of patience for folks who are having a really hard time with technology. Um, If we are techie people ourselves who tend to be the ones asked to figure stuff out all the time, it's easy to be working at this breakneck pace, which makes us almost snappy sometimes. Right. And and that's the hardest thing, I think, for folks who are a little bit tech challenged sometimes, because then they're afraid to even ask questions. So I think like there's the, that interpersonal piece is just be super patient with them. Um, and then finally, um, give them a buddy. Like if there's somebody else on staff, if you don't have time to be that person, um, if they can have a coach that just helps them with this here, that there. Um, that would be good. Uh, of course, I recommend like, again, taking a look at some of the TechSoup courses that, you know, you may, you may give them a 20 minute course on, uh, you know, some particular product and just say here, please, you know, watch this and get, get a little self-educated on it. Um, and then I guess I'd throw one more thing. I call this the grandma example, but when my mom really needs to learn tech, um, she's actually gotten really good at, you know, doing it on YouTube. And so I really do sometimes just push people like you go get on YouTube, start Googling things, become comfortable with how to ask these questions online yourself. That was good, Nick. I'm glad you answered that. Yeah, that was great. My, my experience has been with non-technical people a lot, but that work in technology companies. So this is all new to me. Appreciate your feedback. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. I especially appreciate that. Um, by trade, I'm a cardiovascular neck t- technologist. And so if I get on here, if I get on here and start talking about a P wave and a Q wave of the heart, the positive and negative, everybody would be lost. But for me, it's just, it's just natural. So sometimes I, I'm that person that's like, okay, I asked a question and, you know, kind of got my feelings hurt, but I can tell you about your heart and that's, that's kind of the engine that you need to keep going. So I appreciate that. That's awesome. Well, I appreciate it. Lots of love out to all the folks who work in healthcare. Um, so yeah, thank you for your comment. Yeah. Adrian, I see your hand raised. I just want to add, because I'm I'm in this space um, and I'm a small nonprofit of one. And one of the things that it's so um, you know, you're trying to figure out what to do. And one of my one of the things that we kind of implemented or me. Uh, was knowledge base. We use workplace. Uh, we got from TechSoup and that whole thing. And um, the knowledge base, if you create like short little videos, because uh, people are going to be asking you, especially volunteers, we have all volunteers at Step Up for Mental Health. And so I got to a point of like, I can't, I got to do grants. I don't have time to do another training right now. And so 
I decided to create a video, short videos about specific things that everybody keeps on asking me about. And I made a whole like kind of um, a video training section, how to. And I'm telling you, that's the best way uh, for sure to do it. You know, it'll, in the beginning, it's going to be a lot of pain because you have to do all that first. But in the end, at the back end, it's going to save you so much time. So when you do onboarding for a volunteer, you say, hey, here's the onboarding volunteer section. Here's all the videos you need to look at, et cetera, et cetera. I, I can do a whole uh, training webinar on that. <laughs> that is Adrian, how do, how do you make those videos? What do you use? Okay, I use a couple of things. Well, we have Google Meet, we have Snagit. I don't know if that's part of the thing. And we use another, I know it's a new thing. Um, what's the name of that thing? Uh, Loomy, Loom? Loom. Loom so, you know, various different, various things that I have. Um, I, I, I use ClickUp, just to let you guys know. So it's built in and I, I make a video for that. But basically YouTube. You know, <laughs> I just got used my camera and I upload the video and I, uh, this great thing about workplace, um, but meta, it, it just kind of embeds the YouTube video and it's the best, it's the best thing. YouTube, I'm telling you. <laughs> That's excellent advice though. Yeah. <laughs> so. Hi, uh, Carlos. I see your hand raised. Yeah, I, uh, thank you. Um, I am new to the library. I, I come from technology, but I'm new to the library itself. So I'm new to TechSoup. So is there, um, you know, um, we are interested in migrating to like an Office 365 cloud-based type of solution. Does TechSoup either help with uh, licensing or support or do anything in that space? Um, Complicated answer to that, Carlos, and I'm actually going to ask that one of the folks that we have helping in chat kind of pick up this thread with you, but but in the short version, um, Microsoft's offers for libraries are a specific thing um, and, and, and don't necessarily match all the offers that we have for nonprofits because libraries are a very defined thing to Microsoft. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'll let Kevin, um, Kevin Mulhall and Chad is going to pick up that conversation with you and help you kind of sort through what those options are. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Kevin just put his email in chat. If you want to go ahead and write that down, Kevin, did you want to say anything? Yeah, no, any, anybody and everybody is free to, to give me a, uh, to give me a shout out for any questions uh, that they have. Our team is here to support you. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed um, what's been said to Adrian's point. Um, we're Microsoft Stream users um, and Nick has Nick brought up uh, and I believe it was Parker. Um, to me, when it comes to self-education, whatever tools you have, if you can create a learning management system using them like we do in SharePoint um, and then empower your people to learn, to buddy up. So Nick's point was great about that. Um, and I'm a video guy, I'm a visual person. So wherever possible where you can create that kind of content to help support your users, please do. Thank you, Kevin. Hi, Michael, I see your hand raised. Oh, Gail, did you wanna say something? Oh, um, no, I just wanted to also, I'll include my email and chat. Um, I am here more not to tell you about what we have today, but what I hope to have us bring to you tomorrow. So if there are solutions, I've been jotting down uh, the things that you've mentioned earlier about Loom and Snagit, and that's going to a growing list of things that uh, we're exploring to find partners that will help us expand the resources, you know, be it microphones or software for doing podcasts, for doing recordings, for doing higher quality videos. You know, you guys are always needing to tell your story effectively. And we're really looking to find people that have uh, the ability and the bandwidth to want to bring their resources to TechSoup. Like everything else in the pandemic, hardware, as Nick mentioned earlier, is particularly difficult. And when somebody's struggling just to you know, meet existing commercial demand, convincing them to create a separate nonprofit uh, special offer is uh, complicated. But you know, please, if you have two pathways, I'll include my email. But also, if you go to our forums, if you're registered on TechSoup, you can just drop me a note 
in a forum entitled the Technology Wish List, and that is something that I monitor every day. So uh, you have lots of different ways to tell us what you need, and I can't guarantee we can bring you everything, but we're always going to try. Awesome. Thank you. All right. We'll take these last two questions, Michael and then Linda. Hi. Um, I had a question about the mobile, big, mobile beacon hotspots. Um, you offer the 4G version or the 5G or both? What a great question. I don't know the answer to that. I'm sorry. Um, I, I'll ask somebody in chat to field that, um, but I don't know. Okay. And um, what sort of discount was it that you had for those hotspots? Was it just like um, on a discounted monthly rate or the devices itself is discounted or free or, or what? Okay, I'm seeing in I'm seeing in chat that they should be 5G enabled, and let me just let me just grab you the link for um for Mobile Beacon, and then sure. you can... yeah, and it'll give you all the information. I'm gonna go ahead and mute you. I hear a lot of background noise, but was that your um last question? I don't want to leave. That you. was thank okay. you. Thank you so much for that question. Hi, Linda. Hi. Um. So we are a nonprofit um hospice foundation. Um, in the Pacific Northwest, and all of our volunteers really work from home. We don't have a, a you know on-site um, basis. But what what our biggest issue right now is a donor base. We have been using various uh, versions of Excel, and we need something more sophisticated. Um, and so that's our biggest issue. And I was wondering what kind of recommendation you might have. Well, yeah. Go ahead, Nick. I was going to say, common question, um, very fair to ask, complex answer yeah. um, would be, you know, it, it, I, I think immediately of two different things. One is a CRM or customer relationship management database, right? It's a database right. which, that, that you're going to keep all your folks in. And then the second is that there are specific donor platforms like um, donor perfect. There are software packages designed specifically for the interaction with only donors. Um, those are the two things to look at. TechSoup's got lots of both of them. I'll let somebody pick that up in chat for sure. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, there were lots of um, people saying they were using Asana and some other ones um, in the chat earlier. Um, I want to thank everybody for being here. Um, Nick, what a great job. I always learn, switch it up this year, and I learned a lot more this year. So that was awesome. Thank you, Gail, for coming on, Kevin Mulhall and Kevin Wan. Thank you for being in the background. Hey, listen, everybody, um, as you're taking care of everybody else, please make sure that you take care of yourself and have a great day. Bye, everybody. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, everyone. Good meeting you all. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Have a good one.